Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Welcome. Welcome to another edition of Inspired. My name's Marty Wilson. I am an author and a speaker and a behaviour change expert. And today I'm going to speak to you about how to live a life without regrets. How to get to the end of your days, be sitting on that back porch and be saying to yourself, you know what, I gave it a good crack. So before we start, let me ask yourself a question. Uh, let me ask you a question. And, you know, and please, you know, be honest with yourself. When I, tell you, when I ask you this question, please be honest with yourself. Ask yourself, how are you feeling about your business now? How are you really feeling about it? How are you feeling about life now? Is there anybody out there feeling a bit like this? Okay, okay. Ask yourself this. Is there anybody out there, you've been watching Business Blueprint maybe for a couple of hours, realising how big your to-do list is going, just in general about life and the business. Anyone out there feeling like this? Okay, okay. And has anyone moved through those two emotions? And if you're honest with yourself, if you're really honest with yourself, you're sitting back there watching me, feeling a bit more like this. <laughs> okay, hopefully I'm going to help you with that today. Why am I here? Let me tell you a story. About, uh, about 10 years ago, I was walking, living in London, walking around Kingston-upon-Thames, for those who know it, with one of those baby Bjorns, you know those um, little things where you can walk around uh, and strap a boy to your chest. Like, <laughs> no, no, don't strap a boy to your chest. Like, sorry, strap a baby to your chest. I've just got a picture of my 11-year-old son like strapped to my chest like this, who's walking around... <laughs> Walk around and go, oh, Dad, can we please stop this now? <laughs> Strap a baby chest, you know, baby beyond things. Well, I was walking around with my six-week-old baby boy uh, strapped to my chest. And I was walking through Marks and Spencers. And um, the beautiful, beautiful big uh, West Indian uh, lady on the, on the till must have known that I, looked pretty, I must have looked pretty exhausted because she looked me up and down and just went, you look tired, in this beautiful, deep, mellifluous voice. And it was, like, it was like she just flicked this wind switch on my head, you know? It's like, I was like, oh, God, I have no idea how tired I am. Like, he's not sleeping, the wife's not sleeping, oh, I'm not sleeping. Like, and this lady was just looking me up and down, just going, hmm, 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 not stopping me. And I wasn't stopping. I wasn't stopping. I just kept on going. I was, <laughs> I was just like, oh, I read all the books. There's nothing like the books of tea. That's no, it's coming out of here. It's coming out there. You've got no idea. In the end, this lady just held up a hand like this at me, just held up a hand and just went, you wait till he crashes your car. Little kids, little problems. Big kids, big problems. And this tiny moment where this lady just picked me up and just mentored me like this, gave me a whole new spin on life in the, in the space of a second. That tiny moment led me to create this book series that I've got out there called What I Wish I Knew. In this book series, uh, we ask a whole group of amazing people, if you could go back and give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? I did the first one uh, with a good friend, Danny Gregory, who you might know from the Gruen Transfer here in Australia. Um, he's a fantastic, lovely mate of mine. And, uh, and then we moved on, and now there's uh, about a dozen of these books out there now. There's um, some fantastic titles. I encourage you to look them up. Uh, one I've just finished just recently uh, with the Black Dog Institute, a, uh, a, a, magnific a magnificent uh, not-for-profit here in Australia that helps people through depression and anxiety. And, uh, and so there's a whole heap of these. But the point of that is that I've interviewed over a thousand people, a thousand amazing inspirational people on how to do life well, how to do business well, how to get to the end of your days with no regrets. And when you've done that, when you've interviewed that many people, seven familiar themes start coming up again and again and again when you've asked that many people how to do life well. But when you boil them all down, they all end up coming back to this idea. Do pain well. If you can do pain well, if you can go through life, you know those times when you, all of a sudden you're just thrown in the deep end and, you've, uh, and next week is going to be nothing like last week and all of a sudden you have to connect to your deeper values and work out how you're going to move forward. We've all been through those times in life. If you can do those moments well, according to everyone I've interviewed for my book series, then the good times kind of look after themselves, don't they? And see, in business, 
that translates, because we're talking a business channel. In business, that translates to this. Do change well. Because that's what change is for business, isn't it? Like all of a sudden, you're going along and you think your business model is this going forward and some disruptive business model comes in out of nowhere and you suddenly realise, oh, that's not my business model, this is my business model. And change is everywhere. Change is relentless. Here, this slide that I've got up here now shows... Uh, the rate of change of technology over time because that's what's driving all this change in business and these disruptive business models. And you can see down the bottom left of the slides about 110 years ago when computing machines were first invented. And, uh, and now going through, you know, the Power Max through the 80s and 90s, being an old advertising guy, I love the Power Max. And, and you can see on that slide that in uh, this year, they're expecting to be able to make a computer with the floating point processing power, so the computational power of the brain of a mouse. In 2023, they're expecting to make a, uh, a computer with the computational power of a human brain. In 2045, they're expecting to be able to make a computer with the computational power of every human brain on the planet. Yeah. Don't know about you, that just messes with my head. So change is not going away. Change is universal. If you look at these disruptive business models that are all coming in now, you know, there's Uber, the world's largest taxi company, has no fleet. Alibaba, the world's largest retailer. For those who don't know it, it's like the Amazon of China. It's um, five and a half times bigger than Amazon, 20 times bigger than eBay. It's massive and it has no inventory. Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. Facebook, the world's biggest publisher, creates no content. And I've put this last slide in. This last slide says, the world's largest at doing whatever your business does. What's it going to be? And you know it's coming. You just have to start getting ready for it. Start mentally preparing yourself to accept that it's coming. Because when it comes, it'll take over fast. Here's a slide that shows um, when these platforms got to 50 million users, how quickly they got to 50 million users. Radio, 38 years. Television, 13 years. Internet, four years. Facebook, three and a half years. Twitter, three years. Instagram, six months. Google Plus, 88 days. Angry Birds Space, 35 days. <laughs> when something comes along and people love it, it swamps, it goes through quickly. Like I'm an author, I've seen what's happened to books and I've adapted my business model accordingly because you just have to. There was a wonderful report done this year called the Microsoft Culturing Success Report and it interviewed over 500 small to medium enterprises about change, about uh, innovation. And it found that innovators achieve a 39% greater annual profit than their industry average, let alone those who fight change, let alone those who, who actively strive to prevent uh, uh, innovation in their company. But it also found that 70% of businesses, our human fear of change actually prevents innovation. Human beings don't like change. And it's all down to evolution. Here's our evolution there, coming up, down there, and back down again. <laughs> We're sort of standing up a little bit now with our handheld for the vices and that's it. Charles Darwin, the father of the theory of evolution, talked about it because our brains have evolved to seek patterns and avoid change. We've evolved to love certainty. When we're doing something with which we're familiar, we feel relaxed and confident. When we're trying something different, we get this burst of adrenaline that gives us sweaty palms and a real tight feeling down here. You know, some people call it fear or nerves or butterflies. Some people call it knots in the stomach. Sadly, so many of us call it that thing that stops me, learning a, uh, learning a language, starting a business, phoning that special someone and asking them out on a date. And it's such a shame we're all brought up to call it something bad because it just doesn't have to be. This big feeling that we get when we're out of our comfort zone. And we all know how that feels. You know, like you walk into your favourite restaurant, it's like, oh, nice. New owner, whole new menu. Oh, not nice. Like, I come home to my wife of 13 years, I relax. I come home to my wife and her new personal trainer, Sven, I tense up. We don't like this feeling. And it's and because we don't like it, because our, it's part of our evolution that we don't like it, we all try and build this little bubble of sameness around ourselves to avoid it, don't we? Like, you know, we get new friends just like the old friends, you know, we... 
uh, get a new car that's just the upgraded model of the old car. You know, we go into a pizza restaurant. This, this mate of mine, John, is the, <laughs> is the king of this. This mate of mine, John, walks into a pizza restaurant, enthusiastically picks up the menu, just goes, oh, look, oh, Capricosa, look at that, fantastic. Oh, Sicilian, oh, gorgeous, look at that. Yeah. Ham and pineapple, thank you, sir. <laughs> Oh, it drives me mad. Although John seems to have got very posh since I spoke to him last. <laughs> Don't know where that voice has come from, but I'm happy with it. I'll maybe I'll continue on for the rest of the day with it. Perhaps not. <laughs> See, in my head, that's really funny. Perhaps not at home. <laughs> the point about it is, when it comes to life and when it comes to business, we have to deliberately choose to evolve into being someone who accepts change, who loves to innovate, who loves to try new things, if you want to get to the end of your days without regrets. So how do you do that? That's where these seven things come in, according to the people that I've spoken to for my What I Wish I Knew book series. So, number one, the first thing that everyone says if you want to get through life and get to the end of your days without regrets is use mentors. Please use me. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do. There's always someone who's ahead of you who you can, if you lower your defences, uh, get a bit humble, ask for help. I'm, I'm guessing I don't have to drum, uh, ram that home too hard um, when you're watching on a thing like Business Blueprint because you already understand that there's stuff you need to learn. But for a second, if you, if you don't believe me, if you're, if you're struggling with the idea of getting mentors, look at, the, look at Andy Murray down the bottom right. Remember Andy Murray, like, you know, about uh, five years ago, every tournament, he was, you know, the whining 17-year-old looking up at his mum just going, oh, why am I winning? It's your fault. I'm not winning. But then <laughs> he got Ivan Lendl, great coach. He won Wimbledon. He won the Olympic gold medal. And now Ivan's moved on. He's getting a bit whiny again. He's getting a bit whiny. <laughs> and he's not doing so well. Get yourself a coach because there are shortcuts. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do. There are shortcuts. Like when I was first starting out doing stand-up comedy, I contacted all the great comedians I knew. Um, you know, Rich Hall and Mike Wilmot from the from the U, from the US and Canada. Um, Adam Hills down here in Australia. Um, loads. Pete Burner, Kitty Flanning, and Aknil Sali down here in Australia, and just ask them. How, download your 10, 20 years of extra experience into my head and help me move ahead more quickly. Adam Hill said to me in a little uh, tour around Ireland, he said, never lose your temper in front of a crowd because you have to be in control. You have to be the alpha male in the room. And if you lose, contempt, use, uh, lose your temper, it shows you're out of control. Now, I, I was a full-time stand-up comic in the UK at a time when Australia lost the Ashes and the Rugby World Cup in the space of 12 months. So that one tip must have saved me a couple of hundred gigs. Use mentors. Please use mentors. Number one, use mentors. Number two, trust your instincts. Everyone I speak to for my book says that when they look back on their lives, they look back and they, they went through these moments, like when they were thrown in the deep end and really had to connect with deeper values and their gut was telling them one thing and either through money or through prejudice or um, through uh, just doing what they've always done, they didn't trust that instinct. I remember I read an interview with Russell Crowe and he said, Every time he's had this gut feeling about a movie, um, he said many times he's had this gut feeling, but there was a particular director he wanted to work with or, you know, or, as he said, someone wanted to offer him a lot of money <laughs> and he didn't trust that instinct. Uh, and every time he did, the movie ended up being a dog's breakfast that he was really embarrassed of it. Trust your instincts. Julia Morris said it beautifully in my book on love. She said, when you know, you know, and if you don't know, the answer is no. And how often did you not trust that? If you look back over your love life, how often and did you not? To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.